Hi, everyone. We'll get started in just another minute. We had over 200, 250 people sign up for today. We're excited about that. Lots of interest in our Junior Ranger program. We're about halfway there. Isn't that a cute pika? I agree. People are still checking in, so we'll be just a minute. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started, everyone. I am Lori Ward, and we're happy you're here with us today on our virtual field trip up to Mount Rainier National Park. We have two of our favorite junior ranger rangers with us and two special friends joining them. Uh, before we begin, a few little tips to share with everyone. We have the chat box open and the chat box is for you to answer questions when the rangers ask them. So when a ranger asks a question, you enter your response, your answer into the chat box. If you have questions during the virtual field trip, enter those into the Q&A box. Uh, we're excited today to do some exploring of Mount Rainier uh, as we learn from all, people of all ages and from across the country are with us today. And we're looking forward to learning about skins, animal skins and skulls. Uh, we're gonna do a few songs and have some fun activities. There'll be time to ask rangers. Any questions that pop up in the rangers box will be posed at the end of our, our time together. We'll go to about 1230 and then open it up to questions, maybe a little bit longer. Um, before we begin, I wanna ask our rangers, are there any of these at Mount Rainier? Yeah. This is a moose. Oh, and Oliver has his moose. You found your moose. Good job, buddy. Yeah, I think this is the only moose at Mount Rainier. Okay, that's, we're, we're glad, yeah. we're yeah. glad. And then how about these? Are there any lions at Mount Rainier? No. I only live in like, the desert. <laughs> Africa. <Okay>. And <laughs> with this, I'm going to introduce all of our special guests to Annie Rundy and her, her two children, Oliver and Wilson, who are gonna be with us today. Hi, you guys. You can wave. Hi. Don't be shy. Hi. And Ranger Julie Gonzalez is with us too. She's a favorite with all the Junior Ranger program kids. So with that, I'm gonna remind you, questions go into the question box and save the chat box for responses to the Rangers. So enjoy the program and we will see you in just a little bit. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Oh. Hi, everybody. Um, we are really excited to be joining you today. Um, I'm going to have Ranger Julie introduce herself, and then we're going to kick it off with a song over at our house. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Julie Gonzalez, and I am a park ranger at Mount Rainier National Park. Uh, my job is as an education ranger. So we are usually out on field trips, hiking or snowshoeing in the park with students. Uh, we're really excited to be here today. All right, and I'm Annie. I'm also an education ranger at Mount Rainier, and we're excited to be exploring habitats and animals today. Um, a habitat is an animal's home, and it has everything that animals need to survive, like food and water and shelter and space. All of us need all of those things to survive. Um, but what is something else that you can't live without? What's something else that's super important to you to survive? Why don't you put it in the chat box? 
Water, food. Is there anything else other than food, water, and shelter? Anything else that's super important? Clothes, your family, yeah. Electricity, milkshakes, oh. Milkshakes would be hard to live without. Friends, your bed. Entertainment, yeah. Stuffies, oh my gosh. Stuffies are so important at this house. We'd have a hard time living without them. Awesome, thank you all so much for sharing some great answers. All right, we can wind it down. Um, all of those things are super important for, our, um, for us to survive. And just like those things are important to us, animals have their things that they need in order to survive as well. We're gonna be exploring those in a little bit with Ranger Julie and the different places where animals live. Um, but before we get going, we are gonna sing a song about one of the animals we'll meet today, the snowshoe hare. All right, so Oliver's gonna help me out with the song. Wilson, are you gonna help too? No? Okay, Oliver, are you ready? So this is a repeat after me song. So I'm gonna sing a verse, and then you can repeat it and do the motions at your house. All right, ready, Oliver? Yeah. Okay. There was a snowshoe hare. Then a snowshoe hare. He liked to hop from here to there. He liked to hop from here to there. There was a snowshoe hare. Then a snowshoe hare. He liked to hop from here to there. He liked to hop from here to there. Singing whoa oh oh. Singing whoa oh oh. We oh we oh we oh we oh. We oh we oh we oh we oh. Singing whoa oh oh. Singing whoa oh oh. We oh we oh we oh we oh. We oh we oh we oh we oh. In the winter they're white. In the winter they're white. So they can stay out of sight. So they can stay out of sight. In the winter they're white. In the winter they're white. So they can stay out of sight. So they can stay out of sight. Sing whoa oh oh. Sing whoa oh oh. We oh we oh we oh we oh. We oh we oh we oh we oh. Sing whoa oh oh. Sing whoa oh oh. We oh we oh we oh we oh. We oh we oh we oh we oh. In the summer they're brown. In the summer they're brown. So no one knows they're around. So no one knows they're around. In the summer they're brown. In the summer they're brown. So no one knows they're around. So no one knows they're around. Singing whoa oh oh. Singing whoa oh oh. We oh we oh we oh we oh. We oh we oh we oh we oh. Singing whoa oh oh. Singing whoa oh oh. We oh we oh we oh we oh. We oh we oh we oh we oh. About that snowshoe hair. About that snowshoe hair. That's all we have to share. That's all we have to share. About that snowshoe hair. About that snowshoe hair. That's all we have to share. That's all we have to share. All right, Ranger Julie's gonna take it over and explore some of the animals at Mount Rainier and the different habitats we have here. Thanks, Ranger Annie. Wow, that song was amazing. I hope you all enjoyed doing learning that dance and song with Ranger Annie. So now that you know what some of those, those things that plants and animals need to survive or their habitat, we're going to explore those habitats at Mount Rainier. Now, it's not always an easy thing to live in a place like Mount Rainier, and some animals need adaptations in order to do that. Adaptations are things that animals have, like physical structures, like our thumbs, um, or behaviors that they do, like birds dancing to attract a mate, in order to help them survive in these places. So not only are we going to explore these places, but we're also going to meet some of the animals that live here and learn about their adaptations. So let's dive in here. Awesome. So here we are in Mount Rainier. It's a pretty big place. Uh, maybe you've, you've visited us before, you've gone to Paradise, and as you drive up, you might notice that it looks very different when you start at the bottom of the mountain to where you end at Paradise and as you look up the mountain. Mount Rainier has three different ecosystems or places where animals could find the, their habitat or the things that they need to survive. These ecosystems are the forest, the subalpine, and the alpine. So let's take a closer look at what each of these ecosystems look like. And, and I want you to imagine 
what it would feel like to be here. What might you feel, smell, see, or hear? Let's start off in the forest. So here we see the forest ecosystem. Take a close look. Again, think about what you might see, hear, or feel here. And go ahead and share with us in the chat. What do you notice about the forest? Anything you, you see a lot of? Awesome. Uh, Madeline said it's very green. There's lots of moss, logs big trees and fern, trees, plants. Awesome job, friends. So the, for the, the things that you're going to find in the forest are trees. Uh, it's, very, it's very moist, so moss and lichen lives very well here. Um, it's very rainy and cool in this area, and those big trees provide a lot of shade for the plants underneath. Uh, they, their large branches block the sunlight from coming through. Um, and so plants, plants that like shady areas do really well here. The soil is also really moist and dark. In fact, if you were to take a handful of that soil and squeeze it, uh, you might get some water out of it. We get a lot of rain here in the forest and, and we also have water in the forms of streams and lakes. This is a really good habitat for the Pacific Fisher. Maybe some of you have heard of this animal before. Here is a Pacific Fisher. They're a member of the weasel family, like ferrets, wolverines, and ermine. The reason they like the forest is because here they find a uh, shelter in hollow trees. They use their killer sense of smell to find food. Um, one of my favorite fun facts about the Pacific Fisher is that they're one of the few animals that can eat porcupines. Imagine that. They're pretty fierce animals. They also eat mice, squirrels, and birds. This makes them carnivores, uh, which means they eat meat or other animals. One of their adaptations that they have uh, is that they can, they have claws on their paws that they can retract or uh, put inside of their paws and take them out when they need them. This helps them climb trees uh, and get to the food like porcupines and mice. Uh, here with me I have a fur of the Pacific Fisher. So you can see how big they are. They have a really big tail that they use to balance as they jump from tree to tree. Um, their paws are really cute and small and here's their nose to help them with uh, to help them find that food. So here's another picture and you can see them. They're excellent jumpers. Now, the, uh, the forest life zone is at the bottom or the ecosystem is at the bottom of the mountain, but we're gonna continue up the mountain into the subalpine. So this is where uh, paradise is located or sunrise if you have been there. Uh, here at, at Mount Rainier. Uh, take a closer look at this picture here of the subalpine. What do you notice? Is there anything different than the forest life zone? What do you think you might hear, feel, or smell if you were in the subalpine? Someone says there's lots of flowers and meadows, grass, and pollen probably. Um, someone noticed that there aren't as many trees as in the forest. Awesome. Thanks, friends. So in the subalpine, we, we start to see that there are less and less trees. Uh, this allows for more sunlight to come through and plants like these, like these meadow flowers who need a lot of sunlight can grow in abundance. So there's a lot of open meadows in the subalpine. The soil is really rocky and, and um, kind of like clay, so it's not as moist. Um, and it's, the streams are really cold because they're coming straight from melted snow from up above. Now, the subalpine only looks like this 
for about two or three months out of the year. Um, in fact, right now, if we were to go into the subalpine, we would find that it is covered in snow and there are no flowers here. Um, but that's okay because it's a perfect habitat for the snowshoe hare. Now we already learned a little bit about the snowshoe hare and how it changes color from white to brown uh, in order to blend in with their environment. So here is a picture of a snowshoe hare in the winter time. And notice how it blends in really well with the snowy background. Uh, they, as it gets warmer and the days get longer, they'll grow out their white fur and grow in a brown fur. And this brown fur allows them to blend in with their environment or camouflage. Can you all say camouflage? Awesome. So camouflage is the, the adaptation that snowshoe hares use. They're blending in with their background. Um, so they, in the winter time, they have this white fur here that helps them blend in. Notice how it blends in with that white background really well. And then that brown fur like the one I'm holding here. Now it doesn't happen from one day to the next. Um, it is a, is a gradual transition. So here they are side by side. And if you, if you were to find them in between winter and uh, summer coats, they might look a little patchy like this. Uh, this is a really good adaptation for them uh, because they have a lot of predators and this allows them to hide from them. Um, when they can't hide, they tend to run and, and they're really good at running in the snow um, thanks to their giant foot um, or their snowshoe foot like this, like this one that I'm holding here. Um, so this is a rubber model of their foot. Um, their, their foot is really wide and long, and this helps them balance on top of that snow, just like when you wear snowshoes, to be able to, to run really fast without sinking in. So luckily, they get away from their predators. They're, they're really good at getting away from their predators. So if you were to visit the subalpine, you might run into a snowshoe hare, but depending on what time of the year, they might look very different. Now, if you're still with me on this journey as we travel up the mountain, um, you're going to notice that it's getting colder and colder up here because we're entering the alpine. Now, the alpine is one of the areas in the park that has snow and ice all year round. This area is where we find glaciers or thick layers of ice that are heavy enough to move down the mountain. It is also a very rocky area where we're, we're not gonna see any tall trees um, or a lot of, of vegetation like plants uh, or small flowers. This makes it a really tough place to live. Uh, it's really cold and snowy and windy up there. And because there's no trees, we get a, uh, there's a lot of sun exposure. There's a lot of sunlight there. Um, but don't worry, there are still animals and plants that live here in the Alpine, including the mountain goat, one of my personal favorites. So here is a mountain goat. The one that you see here um, is wearing its winter coat. It is very, it's a very thick coat that helps keep them warm even in the coldest of alpine winters. Uh, in the summertime, they'll shed that coat uh, to help them, help them stay cool. So they don't want to stay too warm in the summertime. Now, mountain goats are one of the few animals where the male and the female goat uh, both have horns. So just like these. And these horns, they, they're different than antlers where they don't fall off. They continue to grow and grow and grow um, each year. They're made out of similar materials as our fingernails. So they keep growing and growing. Pretty cool feature. Uh, another reason why the mountain goat is one of my favorites, because they're really, really good at climbing mountains. And the reason for that, I'm going to take here is this giant mountain goat fur. You can see how it's nice and thick and can be really warm. 
Um, but on here, we have these hooves. So mountain goats um, have an adaptation on their feet that help them balance on these rocky cliffs. Uh, they, the bottom of their feet uh, or their hooves are grippy, kind of like tennis shoes. Um, and this grippy texture helps them hold on really tight to even the tiniest of rock edge. Um, and their two toes will move side to side to help them with this balance. So mountain goats are pretty cool animals. So let's take all that we've learned about the, the different habitats and the animals here in Mount Rainier um, and put that to the test. I'm gonna send you back to Ranger Annie so you can learn, uh, you can learn some cool things about uh, animals and their adaptations and see if you can compete with them. All right, everybody, after learning all of that and sitting still for a while, Wilson and Oliver and I are ready to stretch our legs and we hope you are too. And so we have a game for you. This is called Wildlife Olympics. And we're gonna start with the Pacific Fisher. And we're gonna see if we can jump far like the Pacific Fisher, because they can jump nine feet from tree to tree. And here's another, here's a picture again of a fisher. So they can jump nine feet from tree to tree. So we are going to try our best and we're gonna jump as far as we can five times in a row. At the same time. Okay, you guys ready? Everybody ready? All right, we'll do it together. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four. Okay, one more. Five. Woo, nice job. Oh, kind of out of breath over here. All right. Oh, for the next challenge, we're going to be able to catch our breath a little bit. You ready? This challenge is about the snowshoe hair. Woo, really bright. Here's our snowshoe hair. We talked about how snowshoe hairs are camouflaged, but one trick that they use to be able to hide from predators is they freeze so they can blend in with their backgrounds and the animals that want to eat them won't see them. So we're going to see if we can stand perfectly, perfectly still in our best bunny pose for 20 seconds. Are you ready? So make your best bunny pose, everybody. Ready, set, go. Oliver, you're moving. Whew, okay. Good job, team. Okay. We're gonna do one more about one of the animals that Julie taught us about, and then we're gonna learn about a couple new ones. This last one is up at the top of the mountain, that mountain goat. Here we go, we have a picture of a mountain goat. And you can see from this picture that this mountain goat is an excellent climber. They have special hooves that help them balance. And so we're gonna try our balance on our tiptoes, you ready? And we're gonna see if we can balance on our tiptoes for 30 seconds. Everybody on your tiptoes, ready? Set, go. Oliver. <laughs> it's hard to balance, huh? <laughs> I don't know if we would be very good mountain goats at this house. <laughs> we need to work on our mountain goat skills. Okay, we have a new animal now that we haven't really talked about yet. This is a gray jay. And jays can flap their wings two, over 2,000 times a minute to fly from tree to tree around their habitat. So we're going to see how many times we can flap our wings in a minute. Okay, so count them. Are you ready? Oh, I had someone say a gray jay stole your muffin. That happens a lot. Gray jays, we call them camp robbers too because they like to steal food. Okay. Ready, set, go, flap your wings. Oh, I can't even see you. You're flapping so fast, I can't even see your wings. 
Red fox. They can jump as high as six feet. How high can it jump, Wilson? Tell us. It can jump up to six feet as it's pouncing on small animals that it likes to live or likes to eat. So we are going to see how high we can jump, and we're going to jump as high as we can three times in a row. Are you ready? Okay, friends, let's jump as high as we can. One, two. One, two, three. Woo. Okay. <laughs> awesome. All right. Do you want to do our last one together, or do you? Want, oh, we should do hummingbird too. Okay. We just just kidding. We have we have an extra a bonus one. We have our hummingbird right here. Hummingbirds are super cool. This is called a rufus, and hummingbirds are really cool. They flap their wings in a figure eight pattern. So we're gonna see if we can do that with our arms five times. It's kind of hard, it takes a lot of coordination. This is a coordination one. One, two, three, four. Can you do a figure eight? Five. Five, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> nice job, everybody. Our last challenge is one of my favorites. Can you chill as hard as a marmot, my friends? During the winter, marmots sleep for like eight months. Can we, or six months, sorry. Can we lay as still as we possibly can and chill out like a marmot? Perfectly still. Can you lay perfectly still, guys? Okay. Ooh. All right, friends. I think we're pretty chill over here. Um, thank you so much for learning about animals with us and habitats. Um, Ranger Julie has a final question for you before we um, start to take some of your questions. Awesome job, everyone. It says Animal Olympics. I bet some of you did just as great, if not better, than the animals themselves. So now that we've explored Mount Rainier, the different habitats that we have here, and, and met some of the animals and learned about their awesome adaptations, I would like to ask you, which one of these habitats found at Mount Rainier would you think you would survive the best in. So if you had to choose one that you would live in, uh, which one would that be? And pull them up again. So throw that in the chat. Do you think you would survive best in the forest, the subalpine, or the alpine? If you ask me, I would pick the subalpine. I like having snow and sunshine uh, and those wildflowers are so beautiful. It's hard not to want to be around them all the time. We're seeing a lot of forest, subalpine, alpine. Great job, everyone. So hopefully uh, you'll get an, an opportunity to visit these places in person. Uh, and now that you are experts about them, maybe you can share what you learned today with other people as well. Thank you so much. And, and we're gonna hang out here for a couple more minutes to answer some of those questions that you put in the Q&A box. 
So if you haven't already submitted your question, go ahead and do that. Um, and we'll have Lori read those out to us and uh, Ranger Annie and I will take turns doing our best to answer them. Great job, Junior Rangers. Great job, you guys. Thank you so much, all four of you. Thank you. We're excited. We have a lot of good questions here. I'm going to start and, and just kind of run right through them. Uh, let's see. What's the com most common animal that you see on the mountain at Mount Rainier National Park? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, so depending on where you are in the park, uh, it, it might change. But if you're at Paradise, one of the most common animals that you're going to find are the ground squirrels. So they're all over up there. Right now they are, they're hibernating under that snow, but as soon as they wake up, uh, they're working really hard to get uh, nice, fat, and chunky uh, by eating all of the, the plants, like flowers and grasses that they can uh, in order to prepare for, for winter again. So you'll see those ground squirrels. Um, if you do see them and they look really adorable, um, it's important to remember they are still wild animals. Um, so we wanna give them their space. And they also, as delicious as Doritos are, um, that, that's not part of their diet. So let's make sure we clean up after ourselves and we don't leave them any of our crumbs. Thank you. Can you tell us, are there cougars at Mount Rainier? Yeah, there are mountain lions or cougars at Mount Rainier. Um, they are an animal that is really, really sneaky um, and they're hard to see. They like to sneak up on their prey and so they are often hiding from us. So we don't usually see mountain lions at Mount Rainier, but we do know that they are there and they have a lot of great prey animals at Mount Rainier like deer. How about red fox? Where do they live? Do they live in the forest, the subalpine or the alpine? Uh, great. Julie, do you want to take the red fox question? That's a great question, friends. Um, so the, uh, the Cascade Red Fox uh, is found here in the park in the subalpine. Um, and one of their predators or the things that they eat are the snowshoe hare. Uh, so they, they have to be really quick and, have, um, and you have a good eyesight and a great sense of smell in order to catch their prey. Um, I do have with me here a, a fur of a cascade red fox, um, so you can see. And right now, if we were to see them in the subalpine, because all of that snow is up there, um, one of the places that they don't have any fur is their nose. And so if it's a really cold day, you'll see them coiled up just like this, uh, and they use their tail to cover their nose and keep that warm, just like we would use a scarf, uh, a scarf or a gloves. To, to get our to make our nose warm. So they have adaptations to help them live in the subalpine too. Great. Thank you. Are there deer at Mount Rainier? Yeah, there are deer at Mount Rainier. Hundreds. Hundreds, yes. We see deer all the time. Um, Longmire is a great place. If you like to see deer, Longmire in the meadows is a great place to go for deer. Thank you. People are wondering about the furs. Where do the furs come from? Where do you get those furs? Yeah, that's a great question, friends. Um, I, I would like to say that Ranger Annie and I and our other ranger friends did not go out and kill these animals in the park. Um, but a lot of these animals did die of natural causes uh, in the park. Like uh, the mountain goat, for example, died from an avalanche falling. Uh, some of them just get old. And, and rangers who are out there exploring, they might come across these animals um, and they're able to, to save the fur and, and send them to get, um, the word for it is taxidermy. Um, and so there's, there's a scientist who uh, specializes in preserving the fur and they, they wash it so it doesn't smell that bad. Um, and then we take, the, we take the furs and we use them to teach people about these animals. Uh, so it can be kind of sad, but it's, it's like a way to give them another chance at life uh, and use them to teach. It's great for you because it really makes it real as you're sharing it with people. It's a great opportunity to educate all of us. 
so thank you. Um, how do unseasonable heat and temperature, differing temperatures affect the alpine wildlife population at Rainier? Well, that's a really great question. And, and every animal is different. Um, some animals, uh, especially the ones that turn different colors, like the snowshoe hare, um, that is based on daylight. So it, it, it stays the same. But if the snowshoe hare is white and all the snow melts because temperatures are warmer and, and things are changing, then it might not be camouflaged um, for the summer anymore if summer starts earlier. Um, and so that is one of the issues that we're seeing. There's other animals like ptarmigan that are also similar to the snowshoe hare that change colors. Um, temperature is also affecting some animals like the pika that you have, we have been seeing pictures of. Um, pika are really sensitive to heat. And so scientists are doing a lot of work studying these animals, the populations at Mount Rainier, and seeing how changing temperatures, because we, we just don't know, um, seeing if temp changing temperatures are affecting them, and if so, how are they affecting them? Um, and so that's a huge part of the work we do at Mount Rainier is science. Science is really important. And we do study pica. We are out there counting pica. Um, scientists actually, they make pica noises uh, with their hands, and they uh, look for piles of hay that the pika make. And so it's, it's a, great, a great job if anyone is looking into um, doing something with animals. I thought your, um, your comment about the fact that hummingbirds wave their wings in figure eights, I thought that was amazing. I did not know that. And somebody's wondering if there's woodpeckers at Mount Rainier. Yeah, we, uh, we do have woodpeckers here at Mount Rainier, um, especially in the Longmire area. If you're, if you're hanging out there or hiking through, uh, you might hear them uh, pecking on the woods if you're really quiet. Uh, one of the species that we have is the uh, pileated woodpecker. Um, so you'll see them red uh, and white wings on the outside and kind of uh, dots, black dots on their wings there. They're about this big and uh, they're really cool. You might hear them before you see them. How about bears? Are there bears? Definitely, we, have, um, we only have black bear at Mount Rainier. Um, we don't have grizzly bear, um, but we see them all throughout the park. They love it down in the forest. Black bears are adapted to live in um, areas with trees. So they climb when they're scared. Um, they also have long claws for digging through logs for bugs. Um, and they actually, surprisingly, um, for a lot of people, black bear eat mostly plants. Oh, here we go. We have a black bear right here. There we go. Um, they eat mostly plants. So the forest is a great place for them for a lot of the years. And, and then when the berries come out during the late summer, we see black bear all over paradise and sunrise and in the subalpine area. So we see them throughout the forest and the subalpine at Mount Rainier um, pretty regularly. They're really exciting to see. That's neat, you guys. Um, tell, uh, just a few more questions. Tell us a little bit about the pika. Sharon, can you pull up that photo for us as they're getting ready? People are asking about the pika. Tell us a little bit about them. Where do they live? Yeah. Uh, the, the pika is a, is a really neat animal. It, it, often, oftentimes people think it reminds them of a mouse um, or it's related to the rodent family. Um, but in fact, they are, their closest relative are rabbits. Um, so they're part of the rabbit family. They have, uh, they have these big round ears and, that help them hear really well. Uh, they're only about the size of my hand here when they become an adult. Um, they're not very big, and they uh, they use their uh, they use their call to communicate with other pikas. Uh, you might have heard it before. It sounds like this, eek, eek, and uh, and they use that to to warn other pikas of predators um, or danger. They're they're territorial animals. They don't they don't really like to share their space. Um, and, uh, and part of that is because they spend most of their 
uh, most of their time in the summertime collecting as much food as they possibly can. Um, they're herbivores, so they eat uh, plants like uh, flowers and grasses. And, uh, and in the wintertime, they, unlike the marmot or the squirrels, they do not hibernate. Um, so all of, they have to get all of their food ready uh, for the winter time during those summer months. So if you're looking for pikas or you're hoping to hear them, uh, you might want to head up to the subalpine or the, the alpine. Um, they, their habitat tends to be inside of uh, the rocky hillsides, so rocks that have fallen off, um, off from cliffs, and, uh, and they, they keep their, uh, their plants, they dry them out on a rock, use that sunlight, to dry it kind of like a haystack um, and then in the winter time those rocks and their haystack will get covered with snow um, and that snow will actually act like a blanket and keep them warm all winter long so that's that's where you'll find them and keep keep your ears out for an eek, eek. good imitation i like that julie nice job last question is for oliver and for wilson People are wondering what your favorite animal is when you're up in the park. What do you like to see most when you're in the park? Pikas? We said pikas at our house. What do you like to see? All of them, but mostly snowshoe hair. Mostly snowshoe hair, because bunnies are the favorite in this house. <laughs> Well, I'd say the three of you did pretty good imitations of bunnies today. We want to thank you both as well as you, Julie. Everyone who joined us, I'm sure I thought that was a beautiful <laughs> program today. So we're really grateful to all of you. Washington's National Park Fund supports the Junior Ranger program very proudly. A lot of people like investing and giving for the program. And so, I mean, this is the, the benefit of, of the investments and donations that people make. If you want to make a donation, go online today and show your support. And as we wrap up, we just say, Julie, Oliver, Wilson, Annie, thank you. You all were terrific today. Take good care, everyone. Thank See you, you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>